Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I wanted to come on here and just talk a little bit about, you know, how paintings develop and change and can be improved over the years. The other day I came across this old footage of a painting that I made in December of 2018 um, of this little angel porcelain statue that I found at the thrift store. Initially, I wanted to test out how I could replicate the same porcelain shiny texture in paint, and halfway through doing the reference photo shoot, I dropped the statue and it was beheaded, and I decided to improvise and fill the head with this like liquidy pink paint. Um, I thought that this would be an interesting diptych, and I got started on it in oil paint, which I also hadn't used for many months. So I was a little bit rusty going into this, and I kind of ended up abandoning it halfway through. I never even finished half of the second painting, and I never really got to kind of touch up and finalize the first one that you see here. So this was the end result, this was the first painting, and this was the second, and I kind of just got busy and abandoned them for a long time, mostly because I was just kind of bored of the colors. I thought they were pretty dull and too neutral. It was just blue and white, and I wasn't very excited about it, so I tried my hand at it again in summer 2019. And um, with this one, I wanted to create almost like a neon light omitting from the left side. Um, and I had to imagine this myself because I didn't actually include this in the photo reference. And again, as you can see, I abandoned it. This is what I left it as. And I still wasn't super stoked on it. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to go back, analyze those last two, see what I could fix, and try it again in May 2020. I know it can be super difficult to find the motivation to try something that you previously quote unquote failed at or just didn't really like the result of, but um, I think a few things that can help you out is making three lists. So what you did like about the piece, um, what you didn't like about it, and finding sources for other artists or paintings that you want to use as inspiration for the style that you're painting in. So in this case, for round two of the paintings with that kind of neon glow I tried to add, I pulled inspiration from an artist, John Singletary, who I like a lot, and this was the first painting I found of his, of this angel, and I made a list of the things I enjoy from that, which was the blocked out colors, the kind of unfinished wash that he used as part of the blocks, so you can kind of see how he built up with a quick wash of like a burnt sienna or a red, and then built up the shadows in a little bit more opaque of a wash, and then blocked out the whitest of whites onto that. And I really enjoyed the kind of blocked out, but yet unfinished style of it. The brushwork just looks super controlled in this instance, but the shadows and the tones are still there. So I really wanted to pull inspiration from that and leave a little bit of the underpainting still visible in the final piece and have that kind of act as a neon glow surrounding the figure just because I thought the blue and white color palette was a little too boring for me. Um, and you should always be painting things that you're excited about and that will make it easier to revisit things when you find the elements of the painting that excite you and you're able to carry that through into the work because it'll definitely motivate you to want to finish it. So I found that documenting the first round of this painting was really helpful in showing me what elements of like an underfinished painting that I enjoyed. So I kind of stopped on this frame here. And as you can see, the underpainting of the burnt sienna is really shining through with some more blocked brush strokes over that. So that was something I wanted to carry through. So I was just taking pictures of the process as you go through the painting, because of course this can be helpful to look back on when you want to make quick studies that look a little bit unfinished, but still professional. I also stopped on this frame where the colors were a bit more blocked out and definitely less refined. You can see there's more chunky brush strokes and a little bit less blended shading, just more of like a quick lay down of the paint. And of course the thing I didn't like most was the boring color palette. So in the second painting, I tried to make it a little bit more vibrant. It was still looking a little bit muddy and bland to me. So in this one, I decided to make the underpainting neon pink so I could just leave that shining through. Also something to keep in mind is your new knowledge of the materials you're using. But one of the biggest mistakes I made with this piece was using an oil wash of burnt sienna as the underpainting and then painting with oils on top of that because as you know oils take a long time to dry so as I was painting on top of this with the blue tones the burnt sienna was warming those tones and making them look really neutral and thus more dull 
So when you're doing the underpainting for oil, definitely use acrylic or pencil or something else that stays dry and won't blend into the oil you're laying on top of it. I actually ended up just using acrylic for this third round of painting just because it's a little bit quicker and more accessible for me right now in this pandemic and whatnot. Definitely make sure you fully understand the materials you're using and there's a lot of great art YouTubers and different resources online that you can tap into for that. But yeah, I ended up enjoying this piece a lot more. I just found it was more vibrant. I actually ended up adding a darker background just to kind of make the neon pop a bit more. Because yeah, contrast is really key in my work. So I wanted to make the neon pink stand out in the best way possible. So I added this loose, transparent wash over the back to make it still look unfinished, but give it that bit of a pop that it needed. And yeah, I would say I'm definitely a lot happier with how this last one came out. I think it's a lot chunkier and more vibrant and electrifying. But yeah, if you have a painting that you just don't like, but you really wanted to make work out, definitely try and take these tips into account when trying to recreate it. So make a list of the things you really like about it and make sure to keep documenting your process along so you know what moments you like before you have the chance to overwork it. Make a list of the things you don't like about the finished one that you can change and reconsider for the next round. Pull inspiration from artists that you like and keep in mind the material you're using and how you can best utilize it going forwards. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed as I have some more art content coming your way. I hope you're all staying safe and I'll see you later. Bye!